kind of steer the conversation, but you, you you're never completely uh, in control of it with him. Uh, but but if he's talking about seducing the elites that are being denied, the counter elites who mm. are sitting outside the system, right? But don't and don't have access to the to kind of where they are. Then I think he's right, and I think that that is a project we should be doing. We should show possible elites, potential elites who are locked out of the system. That there is a way forward, and that there is a group, uh, there, there's a there's a place where they can coalesce. There are alternative institutions. There's an alternative vision that could offer them the future that they're looking for. If you're talking about seducing well entrenched leftists who already have access to power, I'm rather skeptical of the ability of that. There are a few, you know, you've got your your Elon Musk types who aren't right wingers, but are are not capable of doing the things they want to do in the current system. Mm-hmm. And I think guys like that may not be a totally on your side, but could be drawn towards many of the things you're interested in because the current system denies them the ability to kind of go where they want to go. And they're the kind of men in vision that can't be denied those things for long. But, uh, but the idea that you're going to just, you know, get a bunch of people in San Francisco who are kind of bored with wokeness to like flip in a moment. Uh, I, I'm less sure about that. They're pretty heavily invested in our current system. Uh, and I don't think they're, they're ripe targets until the system just has nothing left to offer them. And it, it's not there yet. Yeah. This thing can keep rolling on uh, in some monstrous form or another for, for quite some time. Certainly. Well, it's a good way of looking at it. Yeah, of, of you know, there are people that are being shut out for uh, because of their race or their views or their religion or something of the sort. And those people, yeah, I, ideally, um, you know, if they're not going to be sucked into uh, the system, then, yeah, you want to try to utilize those people, not like a cynical way, uh, as much as possible for for the creation of a new elite. I would agree with that. When it comes to what Yarvin is, is referring to here, you know, I actually went to the uh, the Shieldings event in London and I, I asked him during the Q&A. Uh, I pretended to be like upset about it. I was like, how dare you say that about the hobbits? But no, I wanted to know more like, okay, what like really specifically are you referring to as uh, a dark or as an elf in here? And so he had a number of things, you know, if, okay, if you go to Burning Man, all right, I've never, I've never been to Burning Man. Um, Maybe I'm not an elf, um, but uh, he had some, it's basically like blue state aristocracy is what he said. So it's. Yeah, it's disaffected liberals, uh, perhaps. And I mean, I think his approach probably appeals to uh, disaffected liberals. My understanding of I haven't been to any of the Dime Square events up in up in New York, but, you know, I have a number of friends who, who attend pretty regularly. And, you know, the way they describe it is you've got people with like really big dissident right uh, t- uh, Twitter accounts who, you know, take it pretty far on Twitter, wandering around. And then uh, what he described as uh, confused art hose wandering around, too. So I don't know if everyone there is like really knows what's going on or is on the same page. But, um, you know, there's something to be said for people who just are up, they're fed up with the left. And, you know, they, they don't really become right wing as a result, but they become just kind of like right wing adjacent. And I think I, I don't really know what the, I don't listen to Red Scare. Uh, that's no it's no knock on, on the Red Scare girls. I like some of the tweets I see from from the but uh you know I, I that's kind of the vibe i get from them is i don't i don't know if they're really right wing i don't know how they describe themselves um but they just seem like you know they're cozy with with our scene because they understand that like the left at its core is rotten and that you know this kind of bernie bro utopia that they're that they're looking for it's just really never going to happen it's just so easily co-opted by by globalism essentially so i i can see can you see how yeah, like types like that could be one over through his approach, but maybe would you say that it, it wouldn't be like the actual people in power, people of like a class that's, you know, fashionable and so forth. But it's not it's not going to be like deep state employees, is it? Yeah, and I think Jarvin's fully aware of that. I think that is the core uh, audience he's talking about. Again, I haven't listened to much Red Scare or anything, but I've had some opportunities to interact with people in this position and I've had pretty mixed results. There's, there's been a few who I've interacted with who were kind of really on a journey. And I think once they ran into people on the right, who could give them another vision, 
they did start moving that direction and maybe they're still on the journey, but they're, they're certainly not where they were. Uh, they're certainly more sympathetic to maybe what people like us are doing, what we're thinking. And, uh, and so there's, there's some value there. I've also run into a lot of people who are supposed to be uh, leftists or you know, former leftists or former Marxists or current Marxists or whatever, who are, who are sympathetic to, to kind of what we're doing or who are, who hang around kind of our circles. And what I found with many of them is actually, they just hate, the establishment of their own party. And so they're willing to flirt with kind of the right to be transgressive. Yeah. Um, and to, to kind of, uh, you know, stick it in the eye of their other side. But when you actually try to get them to move on anything, when you actually get them to think about anything, we actually challenge any kind of their core assumptions. All of a sudden it's very clear. Like they don't have your core values. Nope. And your shared hatred of the progressive establishment is an insufficient binding mechanism for a movement. Um, because the left gets to be a mystery cult of power. The left gets to get be a hatred movement because they are only about disassembly. They only care about breaking down what existed. And we don't get to do that because we want to build something new. We want to offer a future that is different, is vibrant, is vital, that gives people meaning and purpose. And you can't do that with people who are still centering their worldview on Marxist economics. You can't do that with people who still need to hold on to key parts of feminist ideology for their uh, idea identity to make sense. Like you can't do that with certain people who still are centering leftist ideology at the core of who they are, because they just cannot leave that ideology without destroying their own identity and their own belief system. I don't think that's everybody. I think there are people who can be, to use Yarvin's terminology, seduced. There, there, there are people in that class who, who are listening and looking. They understand that their movement is bloodless and lifeless, and they aren't that attached to the ideology and are willing to make changes if they see that it can move them in a positive direction. But I, but I don't think it's going to win the wider class the way Yarvin wants to. He's, he comes from this class. These are his people. He'll tell you that unabashedly. He has their <laughs> yeah. interests at heart. You know, and, and people, people often say, oh, y Yarvin is a leftist. No, he's not. But he is an, ar an aristocrat. And his interests are with the aristocracy. And I don't think you should read anything from him and think anything else. Um, and so you just always need, you know, he, his work is very valuable and I respect it highly, but you should just always understand that's where his interests are. And so that's what he's arguing for. Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it. 